So good morning, everyone. I have with me Ken Banta um, from the Vanguard Group, um, uh, Vanguard Group for Leadership. And I'm really excited to hear all about what you do. And you're based in New York, New York City. Is that Yes, absolutely. And first of all, thanks for having me. Uh, this uh, is a great show. Um, I uh, Yes, uh, I'm based in New York City. Uh, my background is uh, very, uh, I'd say, down to earth and pragmatic in this area of leadership. I, I spent almost 20 years in some very big companies uh, that were all of them, I'd say, uh, real uh, train wrecks at the time I joined. And mm -hmm. uh, the critical factor to their success was uh, transforming the culture, transforming the leadership, and transforming the way of working. And so uh, fairly quickly, that's the area that I latched into as, the, uh, as one of the leadership team members. And uh, I have to say, we were very successful in uh, making a lot of very quick and deep changes. Uh, you know, you can always change something eventually, but the question is how fast. And so I think our focus was and is on how to accelerate high performance. And I think we did, we learned a lot of tricks and uh, we did a lot of stuff to, to do that. It was interesting too, that uh, my background uh, originally, uh, Sari, was out of journalism. So I was not a, uh, a change person. I wasn't an executive uh, by training. I was a Time Magazine correspondent. And uh, I'd say one uh, insight I think I've had in terms of how I've been successful at this, or at least tried to be, is uh, bringing a kind of journalistic eye to things, which is to be pretty skeptical about everything and to really ask, okay, so, uh, you know, that's a nice program, but why is it going to work? And uh, right. we told people that they should do something, but why will they do it? Uh, because, you know, from experience, uh, you do see governments telling people all the time what they should be doing or what they want to see done. And, uh, you know, rubber and road are two different places. So uh, that's a, a, an interesting kind of basis as I look back on, on how I've uh, been able to be successful in this area. Most recently, since 2014, I have been running the Vanguard Group and uh, we really translate what I learned in the, in, on the inside to working with people on the outside. So I, uh, I and my team do two things. We uh, put together very special uh, networks of top uh, leaders, C-suite leaders and board members across sectors to uh, develop their leadership capabilities. And I would say more like hone their leadership capabilities at that point and further build high performance for them uh, as they think about how they lead their teams, how they uh, work with each other, uh, how they work with themselves. You know, self-management is a big deal these days. Uh, and then uh, on the other side of the coin, literally almost, we work with similar people on how to make these things happen inside their own organization. So you can kind of see that although one thing looks like a network and membership and the other one is consulting, uh, they're really the same things just from a different point of view. So that's what we've been doing for, uh, gosh, now almost eight years. We have a very small tight team that uh, does the core work and then we bring in other people when we need them. Um, we never expect to be huge because uh, the work we do with the companies is really premised on the view that we want to help them help themselves. So uh, we're not like some consultancies that come in with 20 or 30 people to do it to you. Uh, we come in with me and, uh, and another person most likely and we work to get the people inside to buy into the need for change and what that should look like and then to make it happen. So it's a, it's a catalytic model versus a, a kind of a steamroller model. So you just mentioned that you come in, at, you said something interesting to me right at the end there, you come in and show someone how they need to change. But to me, my guess is that someone knows they need to change. So yeah. is that the CEO, the executive, they're, um, someone's someone's saying that something's not going right. We're not on the right path. Yeah. Um, and they're they're reaching out to you to sort of say, get this train back on the track. Um, yeah, that's exactly right. And I think that uh, yes, it's very rare that someone would ask us in when they when they thought everything was ticking over just the way it should. On the other hand, there are very few businesses anymore where things are ticking over exactly where they should for the future, because even if it's working today, a good CEO realizes something probably has to change for the future or we're going to be caught flat footed. So uh, I think where we bring some uh, value is that they may recognize that there's a need for change, but they may not uh, particularly see what what change is needed. So, for example, uh, it's very common to say, well, we need a new set of processes or we need to reorganize. That's everyone's favorite one. Uh, you know, let's put Joe here and Joanne there and flatten the organization and all mm -hmm. this stuff, all of which is um, maybe okay, but it's not a substitute for thinking through what it is you've got to achieve. And uh, 
you know, unfortunately, it, that sort of exercise can be very time consuming and also not really productive because if people in the organization don't really see what they're supposed to do differently, uh, why will they do it differently? You, you, you put them in a box that says you're now something else, but if all they know is right. doing another thing, they will keep doing the other thing in the new box. And um, so our focus is much less on labels and structures and uh, other things. And we focus really heavily on uh, what is it you're trying to achieve? Uh, where are you today? What's the gap? And then um, we, we take a view that uh, almost everything is about the people. So uh, structures can follow, uh, strategies can follow, but first get it figured out, you know, what you're trying to do, which people will be the right people to do it, and what is the task and, and way of operating that they need to get it done. So I'll give you a good example. We're working now with a IT group in the Midwest in a big healthcare company or system. There's almost 600 people in this group, so it's not tiny. Uh, and the basic story is that for uh, decades, they've been the plug it in people. They, they're the IT guys. They can, you know, you call them up, they make the computer work, you have a problem, they fix it. They're the help desk. Uh, they're the, 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 mm -hmm. the technology people. But now uh, more and more of that stuff is reliable and more and more of those things you outsource anyway. So they're becoming the, uh, the people who think about what is the IT strategy? Uh, how does uh, not just IT, but uh, uh, artificial intelligence and other things uh, best work with the business of health and how do you help the uh, people at the front lines, the doctors and nurses uh, treat patients better with these things. And um, of course, you know, it, it's full of complexity because the doctors and nurses all see these bright, shiny objects they can find on Amazon that tell them, you know, with, you know, buy this and you're going to have your problems are over. And so they constantly asking these IT people to please buy this, my problems will be over. And the IT people have to figure out how to say, uh, yes, but no. You know, in other words, right. yes, you have a problem. No, this is not the solution. But yes, I do have a problem, which is completely different than what they used to do. They were uh, basically reactive, uh, whatever you say, thanks. And so that's what we're focused on. And, you know, the, the structures then grow up around that versus having structures in place to motivate people to action. We were really getting the team to say, well, what is it that the customer needs today? And what can our role really most valuably be? And then the structure will follow after that. We'll put people in the right places. But once you've got the right way of thinking, then we're really off to the races. It would seem to me that um, you're in great demand right now during what during this pandemic, where people um, have to restructure in um, how they're working. And maybe restructure isn't the best word, but they're they're processes have been different, how they're working from home, how they're working from home and um, in, in their offices, but managers and CEOs are also saying, you know, how do we get the best out of our employees? And, you know, are we doing the best we can? And it would seem to me that you're someone who can come in and kind of look at that and be very helpful during this time where to have successes for a lot of these companies. How is, how is this time implement, you know, been helpful or, you know, within your own business? That's a great question. I, I think, you know, in part it has been helpful when, when uh, executives understand the underlying issue, uh, which is the one we've been talking about, which is that people are, um, you know, being asked to do totally different things. Uh, they're very- uh, In a very different way as yeah. well. And in the context of a pandemic, which as you and I were talking about before we started, uh, families all lined up in the dining room doing work together. The <laughs> Wi-Fi level is low. Everyone's getting a bit irritated. Uh, people are concerned about their health, uh, their family. You know, all this stuff piles up. And so, um, you know, I think that uh, in a perfect world, companies and organizations would grab onto this kind of approach. Uh, the reality is a little more nuanced, which is that often they don't really understand that this is the need and they tend to grab for uh, somewhat simplistic answers such as let's reorganize everybody or let's uh, bring in a training person on how to work on uh, on zoom, you know, and, and that's, that's a kind of, um, you know, sort of very process or uh, situational answer to what is really a fundamental change in the way things work. And that's not unusual. I mean, no one really, no one really likes complex situations and um, also uh, people don't like change very much. And so, you know, they talk about it. That's probably the most 
it's probably everyone's most favorite official comment is change is good and it's probably most everybody's least favorite act right. <laughs> when it comes to them <laughs> people may say that but no 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 one likes change <laughs> they don't mean it well they mean you should change which is fine you should right. change my life easier that's what uh you know that's a great approach so anyway that's the issue so i think it's it takes a certain kind of ceo or leader to recognize that the deep change is what's needed and then they'll have long-term opportunities that'll be successful and i have to say the uh the organization we're working with which is called community health network in indiana uh really took this whole thing uh to heart uh the whole of it now all 600 people are essentially involved in figuring out for themselves what the new changes need to be we help them figure out what the behaviors are what the values need to be the sense of purpose sense of purpose are we plugging things in or are we changing the way people work and make things better for patients it started out as we plug things in and now their their attitude is we're applying technology for patients that's you know a different reason for getting up in the morning and uh and then if you follow that through okay well how do we do that and uh it also says oh uh, well we might be wasting a lot of our time if this isn't what i'm doing isn't helping patients then why am i doing it uh but right. uh, in the past they were doing it because someone asked them to do it now they will say to themselves what's this doing for the patient and they will often increasingly have the courage to say to the their their business partner you know, I mean, couldn't we do this in a better way to help the patient? I don't quite see how this is doing it. That kind of thing makes a huge difference. And that's very different than just saying, okay, now you're officially in a different box and your job is different and now the world is going to change. I always feel like if um, I could show people the end result, they would hire me. Or if I could show them the end result, the, the conversation's easier. So in your case, and, and, and in your case, I would feel, I feel it's no different. If you could show them, you know, what you want to accomplish and, and you do that through being successful or having clients who are happy. But the truth of the matter is that when you're meeting with someone and you're trying to lay out what you can do to help them, what is sort of that blocking, uh, point when you're sitting there and sort of giving them your pitch of what you can do what it, what's that barrier that they're that blinder almost where they're hmm, i i want to do this but you know that change act aspect or you know yeah. like that, that's a great question you know i think it's a, a couple things it's always the same really and it's very understandable one is that uh possibly well either this sounds on the surface, just like what other people tell me. So what makes this so special? I mean, I've heard from a you know, hundred vendors about their change management program and EY mm -hmm. does this and McKinsey does this. And so you're just, uh, you know, kind of just another person telling the story in a different way. And uh, maybe you're cheaper or maybe you're better, but I don't know. Uh, the other aspect of it is that they actually do understand what we're proposing. And it's scary because they don't want to do that. They want to actually just move the deck chairs. They are not interested yet mm -hmm. in, uh, transforming the organization. So that's the third thing. Um, the fourth thing is, yes, also, um, you know, in the back of minds of most leaders, uh, at least many, maybe not the boldest ones, but many is caution. So, you know, it's not, it's not broken totally. Maybe trying to do this would make it worse. So you, you say it'll get better, but how do I know that? Maybe it's just gonna stir everything up and I'm gonna have a bigger mess on my hands than I had before. Uh, so maybe if it's not in real trouble, let's just, you know, leave it as it is. And um, you know, as, as you know, probably too, I mean, that's for better or worse, that's how bad business staggers along normally. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. until it's really terrible, I'm going to just kind of live with it because something else could be worse or it could be expensive. So we do tend to get invited in by people who see a burning uh, platform of some kind. And the uh, IT leader, I give him a lot of credit for um, seeing that uh, they were doing okay now, uh, but pretty soon they were going to be seen to be irrelevant if they didn't reinvent themselves. And, uh, that's what he asked us to help him do. And he's been a terrific client in terms of, uh, you know, letting us know when the pace is too slow or too fast, but fundamentally committed to the change and hasn't wavered. It's not been that, you know, you, you've probably seen too that kind of a situation where someone starts out with, yeah, let's do all this stuff. And then they get uh, cold feet and they say, well, you know, actually it would be fine if you just basically, you know, kind of reassigned a few people to different things and put a new label on it. And uh, that, that would be, you know, it's the new IT, but we haven't actually changed because I'm getting a little scared of this thing. And my CEO is wondering, is it going to be as you know effective as it was before? So you need someone with a certain amount of courage to push the thing through. But that said, we, uh, we do find people like that. And uh, I also, I think we really only want to work with people like that because uh, hesitant half, you know, half on half off uh, commitment 
uh, situations are, you know, incredibly frustrating from an advisory point of view. And uh, absolutely, you know, I mean, they're they're boring, they're frustrating, and they're and they also end up being costly because you got to either throw lots more effort at the new new thing they want to do, uh, and then they back down, or you don't know how long they're going to go on on a certain course. And so, uh, you know. I think the best client is one that you don't necessarily agree with them, but they've got a very clear point of view and they want, and they're committed to having you help them see it through. I like that. How, um, and you work all over the country. So how do people find you and, and how do you work right now? Um, or, you know, before and, and, and during this time? Well, it's very interesting. You know, initially we were going out kind of separately to reach, um, potential advisory clients, uh, through, uh, networks and, uh, going through associations uh, and through personal networks um, people who know you will you know unless they had a terrible experience usually are good referrals but what's very interesting is that uh, over the last year or so i'd say we are finding that a huge number of our referrals are coming from our uh, network from the uh, the executives who are part of this uh, sort of high performance leadership uh, group and what happens is uh, we'll have a meeting uh, with them, say a group of 10 or 15 uh, general counsels. And then we always do a, uh, a post uh, event review with each one of them to just say, what, you know, what would go, what went well, what could go better? The topic was how to deal with the board. Uh, you know, did you feel that we were spending too much time on the board part versus the dealing with the CEO, which is the other equation in it? Uh, how did you feel about, you know, did we talk enough about the, you know, the sort of psychological aspect of this for a CEO who, or a GC who works for a CEO that also works for the board. It's a pretty tricky thing to do. Anyway, all that stuff. But then at the end, we'll say, and you know, um, we found that um, a lot of what we've been talking about could be very valuable in your own, uh, in your own department or working with your business partners. What do you think? And a, a, quite a large number say, well, yeah, of course. I mean, uh, the sort of light bulb goes off that this was something I learned from. Why wouldn't my, at least my senior team members learn from something like this mm -hmm. too? So, so that's what, a way a lot of things are evolving right now. And um, and then sometimes they want to uh, develop something for their leadership team, which is fine, or they may have something they want to do with the entire department. Um, or in the case of general counsels, they you know they are essentially a, a function, although a very special one. And they are constantly working with business partners who of course have no idea what they really do. And you know the general counsels uh, and their teams right. themselves as really being able to provide some very important advice and the uh, people in the business are saying, just draft up a legal document, please. Uh, and you know, they don't ask the question, do I need that document? So, uh, or why are we doing this in the first place? It's very much the same as IT. So, uh, so we help uh, increasingly helping uh, those senior leaders, GCs, um, figure out you know, kind of how to get things done better on leadership with their teams. I like that. And how can um, people find you um, if they wanna reach out um, to um, get more information because I always feel badly, like I feel like we could go on and learn more, but um, I want to direct people to getting a hold of you and getting more information. Oh, that's great. Well, uh, one simple way is to write directly to me at uh, Ken Banta at vanguardgroup.nyc, uh, nyc, not.com. And then the other is just go online and look for the Vanguard Group for Leadership. Um, You'll uh, first find the Vanguard Group, who are the financial group, which we always like because uh, they're like a uh, they're they're a, they're a magnet for people to come uh, to us. But we're the other one. We're the Vanguard Group for Leadership, a few uh, steps down, and uh, that's a great way to find us as well. And you'll find our website there and some uh, some background on how we do things and uh, and what we've done in the past. I love it. Well, thank you so much for spending time today. Um, I think that we all learned a lot, and I think that the most important thing is that when you feel your company is needing help you have to reach out for for the help you have to be the executive to look across and say you know how am i going to grow my company what is going on what you know tools do i need and not be afraid to reach out and bring them in um, and that's you know one of the greatest um aspects that um, I've had when I'm talking to people like yourself, that these are resources that executives um, need to bring into their companies. And I don't care what, you know, what size company you're talking about. Um, it can be a healthcare company of 600 people um, that's, so, you know, incredibly needed. And it can be, you know, the mid-sized company. Um, but when you need 
resources that are there and you have to you have to reach out in order to 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 grow your company and look and you have to look to be able to do that that's that's when people say you know i'm i'm sort of stuck in the mud or you know that's why chances are there's a little bit of a problem yeah i think that's absolutely right and the only other thing i'd add to that is that uh it's good to think about what kind of resource, because uh, in some cases, uh, a company really does need a uh, very big team of people to come in and, for example, uh, figure out a whole new uh, layering and org design and so forth. And that takes, you know, potentially a lot of uh, relatively young people running around with clipboards. Uh, but um, an awful lot of things are, are not that kind of thing. They're things where you want to have change happening sort of inside the organization that's really personal and uh, cultural as much as anything else. And my, I'm quite strong in feeling that that's not something you delegate to an outside group to do for you. You have, they can help you figure it out, but mm -hmm. you need to, your own people need to take ownership of it and do it. And when that happens, uh, you get tremendous results. Agree. Thank you again. Have a wonderful day. Um, and I'm, I'm so glad we got to spend some time together Thank learning you. more Thank about you. the Vanguard Group um, for leadership. So, Thank you. This is terrific. Thanks for having me. All right. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. You too. Bye-bye.